Okay, so good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome to the central region of Ghana, Asin Manso, slave market to be precise. My name is Roland, and I'm going to be your tour guide. But before we start with the tour, we have to observe a minute of silence for all our enslaved Africans who lost their lives during the transatlantic slave trade. <coughs> after, say, after observing a minute of silence, I say, may their souls rest in perfect peace. Then you respond by saying, Ashe. Okay, so let's observe a minute of silence for them, please. May their souls rest in perfect peace. A shame. A shame. So during the 15th and the 16th century thereafter, our brothers and sisters were hunted, they were captured, and they were treated as merchandise. They were shipped across the Atlantic Ocean to work on plantations in the U.S. of A.S. and the Caribbean. As St. Mansu's slave market you see today was the greatest proof for the adoption of individuals, family, friends, relatives across the Atlantic Ocean to work on plantations. It was the biggest slave market during the slavery era, as documented by one British historian known as W.E. Ward in his book entitled The Short History of Ghana. Although there were some slave markets then, like the, like the Nasiru slave market in the northern part of Ghana, Piccolo slave market in the northern part of Ghana, and Katakashi slave market at the northern part of Ghana, as St. Mansu slave market here and the Salaga slave market at the north played a major role during the transatlantic slave trade. Slaves were, and slave Africans were captured from Ghana and countries that share border with Ghana at the north. That is Burkina, Burkina Faso, Mali, and some parts of Niger. And they were made to march in chains and shackles to the Salaga markets at the north. It was in the Salaga markets that they had their first resting period. After resting for a while, they were again made to march in chains and shackles to the Asimansu slave market here, which is 300 miles from the Salaga markets, barefooted and half naked. During that era, because they were marching through the forest belts of our country, our enslaved Africans, our ancestors, were exposed to many dangers while marching from the Salaga slave market to Asin Mansu slave market here. Some of them were beaten by snakes, others were attacked by wild animals, others suffered the punishment and brutality from the slave raiders. It wasn't a peaceful march. Any opportunity that our enslaved Africans get, they try fighting back. But because they weren't having the ammunition as compared to what the slave, the slave raiders were having, they were killed and killed. Their biggest challenge was also at Triple Praso, a community called Triple Praso, crossing the Praia River. Basically, it was the survivor and the fittest, only the strongest survived. So those of our brothers and sisters who couldn't make the journey, they were dumped in the river to die. So when they arrived here in Asim Manso, this was where they were sorted out according to age and gender. In determining their ages, a device called a speculum is put into their mouth to count their teeth, thereby forecasting their age. They were made to take their last bath here before some were being auctioned. After buying them, they again matched them in chains and shackles barefooted to the Cape Coast Castle, which is 31 miles from here. Because it, was, it is in the Cape Coast Castle that you have the slave ship being docked. Now, during that era, whenever you were captured, it was a match of no return. You're going from your roots and you are never coming back. But now, things have changed. Now, our diaspora Africans, our brothers and sisters, our African descent from all works of life are coming back to their roots. Yes. So we needed to change that perception, that writings on the walls of the Cape Coast Castle from the door of no return to the door of return. Yes. Now the big question <laughs> is, now how do we do that? That is why we have the mortal remains of our great ancestors here, Madame Christa of Jamaica, and Samuel Cousin of the U.S. of A. Madame Christa herself was a Maroon who wanted to make a point for the abolishment of slavery. During that era, she decided to starve herself to death. Basically, she went on an anger strike so that it will serve as a point for the people to know that slavery is not a thing that should be practiced. And those are some of the punishments, Madam. And during that era, whenever you starve yourself to death, 
there is a punishment that is meted on you to serve as a deterrent from your other slaves from doing the same. They will chisel your teeth and they will force you to feed. Yes, those are some of the punishment Madam Krista have to endure. But yesterday she stood on a gun and said, no, I will not take in anything until she lost a life. We have Samuel Cousin here, the first African-American to rise to the highest rank in the U.S. Navy. As we all know, most our European colleagues call we Africans brutes. You know all the words that they, they classify us with. So for our man to rise to that highest rank in the U.S. Navy, we thought it wise to acknowledge these two of our great ancestors. Now, not until 1991, 1998, when the government of Ghana decided to open this tourist site <coughs> us so that we can educate people further on whatever transpired during the slavery era, the families of Madame Krista, excuse me, when you go inside, you have to take your, yes. Sacred ground. Yes. So, yeah. So the families of Madame Krista and Samuel Cousin contacted our Ministry of Tourism and told them about the wish of their two great, our two great ancestors. It was in their wish that they needed to be buried on their ancestral roots. So together with the Ministry of Tourism, in collaboration, the mortal remains of Madame Krista and Samuel Cousin were, was flowing from Jamaica and US respectively to Ghana. Oh. They used the Atlantic Ocean because when we were going, we used the Atlantic Ocean to the Cape Coast Castle, to the dungeons, to the door of no return with some expatriates. Mind you, during that era, the door of no return was a very narrow one that you can't, you, they have to force you and pinch you before you can pass through that door. But oh. when, yes, but when we brought these two of our great ancestors from Jamaica and US, we opened the door so that when you are passing through the door, you can pass it at ease. So they, were, they landed here on the 31st of July, 1998. The same day, they were brought from Cape Coast to Asin Manso Slave Market. Now, Asin basically means travelers or people that are just passing through. So a lot of the people here in this community also have linkage with whatever transpired during the slavery era. So we understood and we felt the pain of our ancestors. So on the 31st of July, on the 31st of July 1998, we mourn our ancestors when they arrived here. Everybody in this community was in black. And in Africa, when you see us wearing black, it means we are mourning. We mourn our ancestors. Mm -hmm. And the following day, which was the 1st of August 1998, these two of our great ancestors, Samuel Cousin and Madame Krista, were buried here. Mm -hmm. So every 1st of August is when country Ghana Decided to, decided to celebrate our emancipation festival. Sometimes when I come, they even they sometimes ask me what is the meaning of emancipation. I always say I have my way of saying it. Basically, I tell them emancipation is com coming together as Africans to take stock as Africans where we were yesterday, where we were, to, where we are today, and where we want to be tomorrow. Yeah. So together in one accord, we strategize on how to make Africans stronger yeah. again. The transatlantic slave trade was first abolished by the people of Denmark in 1804, followed by the people of Great Britain and US in 1807 and 1808 respectively for the abolishment of the trade, but not for the abolishment of slavery. Uh -huh. Slavery was abolished from where we're coming from. Slavery was abolished in 1865. But the question that I like asking my brothers and sisters, are we really convinced, are we really sure, do we really believe that slavery has been abolished? No. no, it transforms in different changed. ways. Yeah, it's yes. on a different face. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> the education system been refined. Yes. Yeah, the economic system. Oh yeah, that's why we. So here. because, <laughs> so because of the of the rain, and yeah. even I don't think the rain should should stand on our way. Mm. Yes. So because of the rain, we'll be making our way first to the to the ancestral route to the slave river, and now. Everything that I say here is very, very important for all of us here to meditate and reflect upon whatever happened. It is with that that you really understand, that, is, that you really feel the kind of inhuman treatment and atrocities that, were, that were, was committed on our ancestors. Because it is, it is raining, if you don't mind, because always whenever we are walking through the ancestral roots, I don't allow people, I don't allow my brothers and sisters to, to go with their sandals on. Okay. 
because it is a sacred place and we are our ancestors walked over a thousand miles they were they walked through these bushes some were pinched so for us to just walk two minutes with our bare foot i don't think it's something that we cannot do so even even though it is raining i think we have to do we have to do it for them yes and, and also I would, love to, I would like to ask something. Do you have coins on you? Coin. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. Coins? Yes. Coins, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not too many. Yes. yes, coins. So if you have make if you have enough, just share it to ev everyone. When the right time comes, I'll tell you why I said you should, you should use the coins. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is there a place we can get coins here? No. I know. Like, I, mean, so that okay. I, don't, I also don't have some.